Greetings, who? I'm Andy, and I'm George, and welcome back to the Windmill Full of Courses. Talk. This is another one that I specifically wanted to check out. So I listen, I just find all these like up and coming bands, and this one really caught my eye lately. It's Vengeant. It's a, uh, I guess, symphonic metal band, just to give the tag out there, but what it actually sounded like to me is Oceanborn era Nightwish with blast beats and the modern sound and epic battle metal stuff combined in there. That what their first single sounded like. This is only their second song. First one was called Angel's Battle Cry. I'm gonna link it somewhere. Um, and this is their second song. It's called The Unreal. It's a Swedish band mm -hmm. with a Greek vocalist. Oh! Oh cool. Oh cool. Well, we like the Greek. So yes. I think the yeah. Greek are really good in like death stuff, set to flesh, EG, whatever, prog stuff and in symphonic stuff as well. Yeah. So I just wanted to say, we know we're throwing in a lot of our own stuff, but we're getting to all the suggestions. Don't you worry about that. That's why both of these are going on in the same day. We don't want to keep you waiting any more than absolutely necessary. Okay, we're keeping people waiting more than necessary. Let's go. <laughs> It caught me by surprise. She wasn't doing that in the first song, mm -hmm. and the vibe is also really different. This one sounds more like a surreal kind of fantasy song, and the other one was more like a cult battle song. Like it, it had this symphonic sound, but the vibe was kind of like what you'd expect from Amor Amar. I don't think I'm getting it right, but like that battle kind of 
I'm song. not. I'm not feeling the battle part of all the ingredients that you described. That's the one I'm not feeling because it's not in this song. It okay. was in the previous one. Okay. Um, I'm. I'm loving the drums. I'm loving the transitions into the choruses. I think those were transitions into the choruses. You know, when you go. That yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I feel. Yeah, and I think what what he's doing with fills and especially with the kicks is almost like the things you hear in Tech Death, when it goes all that arguable machine gun kind of techy. I'm actually also getting a bit of a power metal beat sort of pace from some of the stuff. It's I don't That's know drum going on on the chorus. Drum yeah, drum wise, this song is hard to place. The riffs uh, in the intro and through the verses kind of were a bit dream theaterish, also from the guitar tones I would say. But also then keeping it basic when the uh, song needed space for the vocals to develop. So, so far this is interesting. Yeah. I, I also like the kind of progressive-ish build up into the intro. And I think on the verses it's doing this thing that you have the main riff and then the bass is just coming in and out. So yeah. it's got this full effect and then it kind of gets more shallow and then full and then shallow and it, it feels like it keeps battering you. I didn't, I didn't catch that. I'll look for it in the next chorus if we get another. Now, blue section. I think so, yes. part was an extended guitar solo yeah I well uh, yeah that was cool and before before it got shreddy and that stole all my attention I was noticing what the uh, background was doing which is that you had um, sort of these spaced out chords and then it would settle into a choppy riff with a uh, I think it was kicks I don't know if it was double kicks or what it was on the drums but you had this driven yeah really fast fast galloping. drum and then it would space out again and all that so that gave it a really cool dynamic under the solo. Yeah. And I also noticed the orchestral on the second part, and part. I think it was there in the first half too, I just didn't notice it. Um, I think it's sampled stuff, but yeah, it, it does it does what it's supposed to. It adds that touch of atmosphere to it. Yeah, and I think it, it makes the sound pretty like grand, epic, because you can get the vibe they're aiming for also from the artworks and like the way they're expressing everything, I guess. And the orchestration definitely adds to that. What I want to say about the guitar solo is going into it, I had this thing like, huh, they're doing something really cool that normally when you get a guitar solo, the guitar is stealing the show. But now the guitar solo is in the forefront, but the drummer is stealing the show. And then just as I was thinking that, the shred stole the show. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, no, no, actually we're doing both. <laughs> It's like, you don't have a clue what the hell we're doing here. Stop guessing. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually it because there's so much going on. I thought the drum transitions on the second part again went even more into dream theater ter territory. Even like textures wise, like, you know, the tom transitions on dream theater. It had the same tone on the toms almost. I think, I think we can't really comment on that un unless we say which is drummer and I don't think we can tell apart the dream theater drummers that well. I know. I mean, that's one of the eternal struggles. I think, I think Mike Mangini versus Mike Portnoy is probably the only thing in metal as debated as which is your favorite Nightwish vocalist. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and this band sounds like Nightwish and like Dream Theater. Yeah, so those are the most over-debated 
quarrels, I would say, in the metal scene. Do not ask us that. Ever. Yes, please. Th this comment section is not for Dream Theater drummers or Nightwish vocalist debates. Yes. It's for suggestions. And that's where you come in. Let us know if you enjoyed this video. Let, let us know what your suggestions are. If you enjoyed it, and if you enjoyed our reaction, we greatly appreciate the likes and shares. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. With bells on. Thank you very much for stopping by. We hope you enjoyed your stay, and we'd love to see you back at the windmill very soon. Corpses out.